Hi, we're about to do a kitchen renovation and I'm doing a before video um, and I'll take you through the process with me. So we've been living in this house for 10 years and when we bought the house, we knew it needed a renovation done. Um, we've spec'd out the reno, gotten quotes and things like that over the years. We got close to doing it a few years ago, then COVID happened, that delayed us and now we're at the starting line. Demo is gonna happen tomorrow, so let me walk you through what we have right now. The architecture of the kitchen is pretty typical of houses in this neighborhood. There are hundreds, if not thousands of these kitchens, either this layout or it's mirror image layout. Um, there's a door to the dining room, a door to the front hall to keep the space enclosed so that the work that happened here was private and the dining room was the showpiece. This is what we call the breakfast nook or probably the eating part of the kitchen. This is an exterior door, or at least it used to be, and now leads to a bathroom. Um, we're going to do a renovation on that in the future, so we'll talk about that another time. We still have the original plaster walls. Um, so when we uh, take down the cabinets, um, there's a good chance that the plaster is going to come down with it. So we've planned to take the um, walls down to the studs re-insulate and put drywall up. We have a mix of old and new cabinets. So these cabinets, I believe are old, possibly original. Um, and then we have new cabinets. So this is something that you would get at a Home Depot. Um, the countertop is uh, um, some kind of, I would say Formica. Um, it was lovely color it was beat up when we got here. It's even more beat up now. Um, the cabinets, have the same um, handles throughout, but the placement of the handles, I can't, I can barely reach them. Usually I just open them up from underneath. And uh, the hinges are very industrial. So you can see underneath that they had a different kind of hinge and they were replaced. This window is original to the house. There's a storm window on the outside, so it doesn't leak too much air. Um, they're a little bit cold when you get close to them in the winter, but not nearly as cold as the draft that's coming in. And so there's some kind of gap uh, behind the stove. Uh, the flooring is probably about 15 years old. Um, the previous owners had a flood and had to replace all the floors on the main floor. You can look underneath and you can see the uh, diagonal floorboards that are actually supporting the house and that uh, the nice flooring doesn't go all the way to the wall. One of the main reasons we wanted to do the renovation is because this refrigerator causes a choke point in the kitchen. Um, this is the primary workspace. That's the biggest piece of counter that we have. So almost all the food prep and the cutting and so forth happen there. Um, and so it's very difficult for someone to get into the fridge, even though we have French doors, it was worse when we didn't, um, or even to get something out of the, the freezer. Um, back when this house was built, the ice box, um, it would have been an ice box in 1929. The first really commercial refrigerators were in 1927. So they may have had them, but the majority of people had ice boxes at that time. Um, and you've probably seen pictures of them, they're, they're small, right? And so over the years, the refrigerator has gotten bigger and bigger, and this becomes the narrowest part of the kitchen, and we wanted to address that. So we've been planning the demo, or actually the renovation for a while, and so we bought these appliances over the years with the intention of using them in the future parts of the, uh, the reno. So this um, Bosch dishwasher, it's great, it's in good shape, we're taking it with us. Um, this is an LG uh, French door refrigerator with a freezer on the bottom. We're going to take that with us. This is a gas stove. We're not going to be using that after the reno. We're going to have an induction cooktop for a couple of reasons. One, uh, natural gas emits a lot of greenhouse gases. The other, it, it contributes to a lot of indoor air pollution. Furthermore, we're going to move the oven or the stove to the other side of the kitchen, which means putting in a new gas line on the other side. And I said, well, there's no point doing that, especially since natural gas is not going to be in the future. Um, I totally foresee a time when the city um, says no more gas stoves, and but existing gas stoves will be grandfathered in. So we're just future proofing. There's this range hood here. It works. It's plugged in. Uh, you can turn the lights on. You can turn the fan on, but it's not vented to the outside. 
Um, it is on an exterior wall, but they just didn't connect it. So by the letter of the law, there is a range hood over the gas stove, but it doesn't vent. The vent is up there. I'm going to climb up there in a second and show you. So this is the hatch. That's the, um, and you can see that when I open it, the louvers on the outside open as well. There's a ventilator that's not plugged in, but you know, presumably it will turn and it will ventilate your kitchen. So there isn't any really good places to do garbage in this kitchen. So we have this little, little, you know, garbage can under the sink that everybody has, and it's not big enough. It, it's barely big enough to hold like a coffee cup from Starbucks. We put our compost bin on the wall just so that we could make more counter space for us. Um, before we started packing up, we had a garbage over here, one of the big um, Ikea bins, um, and that was pretty good. And we also kept our recycling out here. Um, hopefully we'll do a better job in the new kitchen. The last thing to talk about is, are the walls. In older homes, you have, always have to worry about as, asbestos. Um, and in this area, um, in the 1920s, uh, asbestos would have been an upgrade. Um, so if you wanted to do, you know, something a little bit fancier and better, the new hot technology, they would have used asbestos. Um, so we knew from a previous renovation that we have asbestos in the house. When we first moved into the house, um, we found asbestos on some of the pipes and we had somebody come in and abate them before we even moved in. Um, and then here, on a previous renovation, we knew that there we have text, this texture on the ceiling and also on the walls elsewhere in the house. This texture contains asbestos. So we knew we wanted to do testing for of asbestos before we started doing our renovation in the kitchen. So we had someone in last week and she took some samples here. So this is a textured wall. Um, so that, you know, it's, a, it's uh, good to be suspicious of these textured walls. So she took three samples, one, two, three. So she covered them up with tape after she took them. And here, let me open this up. You can see the size of the hole. It goes right through into the wall. And she also did a really good job of vacuuming up the um, dust that she made by taking the sample. She used hand tools. Um, and so every different kind of surface um, that we were concerned about, she took a sample of. So this textured wall, and she did some samples of this smooth wall. And she took the samples from elsewhere in the kitchen, but it doesn't really matter. The assumption is that, you know, if it's smooth, it's the same throughout the kitchen. Um, and... Uh, the test results came back. We said she um, suspected um, asbestos because of the texture and also because of the color. Um, she said it's a little bit yellow, which makes this suspicious of asbestos. So we were operating on the assumption that it was asbestos and we were holding back the renovation or the demolition by our contractor. We got the results back on Monday. And then there was, they use a very specific wording here, no evidence of asbestos. So we said we don't have to abate and we said to the contractor, come on in and we're gonna do reno um, demolition tomorrow. The thing to know about asbestos is that it's small particles that cause cancer. So they get into your lungs or any of your body systems, your organs and your body you know, creates, tries to get rid of this tissue and that causes cancer and the cancer builds up around these crystals that get into your body. Um, and so that's why you don't want it around. And if you have some particles in the air, um, it can be pervasive and it can be in the house forever. There is a very, very fine particles and that's why you don't take any chances with asbestos. Um, my contractor didn't seem to be too concerned about the asbestos. He said he was gonna be wearing masks, you know, for the dust and things like that. And he's done lots of, um, renovations over the years, lots of demolition over the years that he was going in. If he'd been exposed already, he, you know, what's one more exposure? Um, so we really had to push him to let us uh, do the testing and the abatement. Um, and fortunately, uh, the test came back with no evidence of asbestos and we can go right ahead. The last thing I want to show you is the light. We have this uh, set of spotlights, probably from Ikea. So the kitchen is pretty dark. Um, recently, we added some under cabinet lights from 
Lee Valley. Um, and these are fine. Um, they're little battery operated ones, but the workspace is dark. It's hard to see what you're doing while you're cutting. Um, and sometimes we'll turn on the light from the range hood, but looking forward to some better lighting.